Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you in this final video of ours about vector fields. We're going to talk about divergence and curl. First, we're going to start off talking about a review of the gradient real quick. So remember the gradient of some scalar function f is an operation. We call it also del f, the gradient of f. That operation, remember, just basically takes the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y and assigns them to be our first and second components of a vector field. Or if we're in three-dimensional space, we include an extra partial fz term as well. Remember that the gradient of a scalar function tells us about the direction of greatest increase. So this operation of del, which is the gradient, we take a scalar function, we put it into this operation, and it spits out a vector field for us. So in order to take the gradient of something, we need to be taking the gradient of a scalar function. And out of that operation, we will get an answer that is a vector field that tells us about the direction of greatest increase. Quickly doing a couple reminders of how to calculate del f. So here I have a function of x and y, which is x squared y plus 2x. This is a scalar function. So my del f, remember, is going to be, if it's a function of x, y, it will be partial fx, comma, partial fy, and that will give us a vector field as an output. So partial fx here, if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, then I will get 2xy plus 2. And if I take the partial derivative of this scalar function with respect to y, I will just get x squared, since this last term will have a derivative of 0 with respect to y. So our gradient, our del f for this scalar function f, is actually 2xy plus 2 comma x squared. Let's look at our other example here. In three-dimensional space, I have a function of x, y, and z, which is x times e to the y, z. So remember, our del f here is going to be, because we have three variables, partial fx, partial fy, and partial fz. And it will be a vector field as our output for this operation. So if we find partial fx for this, treating everything else as a constant, taking the derivative with respect to x, we just get e to the yz partial fy, treating y as the variable now. I would keep the constant multiple x. My z would be a constant multiple inside of the exponential. So when I take the derivative of this exponential, the chain rule would give me a z multiplying on the outside. And we would get x times z e to the yz. My partial derivative with respect to z of this, so now z is the variable and y is the constant multiple inside. So when I take the derivative of this exponential, the chain rule is going to give me that a y would multiply on the outside. And we'll get xy e to the yz for that. So our gradient for this one, our del f, is going to equal e to the yz, comma, xz e to the yz comma xy e to the yz. And again, that's a vector field. Remember what type of object we're supposed to be getting when we do this operation. The divergence of a vector field f is, so we might see it written as div f or divergence of f. It may also be written as del dot f. And the reason we write that is not because it's an actual dot product, but because it helps us think of how to calculate it as an operation. So del dot f, the divergence of f, is actually calculated as thinking of it as two vectors, the partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y as my del, and then my f being m and n. So when I do the dot product of these, I get the partial derivative with respect to x of m, plus, remember a dot product gives us add there, partial derivative with respect to y of n. So we get mx plus ny when we calculate del dot f in two dimensions. You may recognize this mx plus ny as our two-dimensional divergence from Green's theorem flux form that we covered in our previous video. And we'll just make a note here that you can, of course, calculate the divergence of a vector field in three-dimensional space. We would have partial x, y, n, z, dot m, n, and p. We would have a third component of our vector field in three-dimensional space. And so our divergence in three dimensions would be mx plus ny plus pz. This expression here we can use to find the flux through a surface in what's called the divergence theorem when we have a surface in three-dimensional space.
And again, remember from our previous video, we talked about the divergence being a measure of how much a vector field is spreading out at a point. And so that's why it tells us about flux as well. Thinking about what types of objects we get using this del dot operation, this divergence operation. So when we take the divergence, we're taking it of a vector field. So our input is going to be a vector field. And when I do the operation del dot or find the divergence, you'll notice this dot product is giving me things that are all added together. So I'm not getting a vector output. I'm actually getting some sort of a scalar output. So it takes an input of a vector field and gives us an output of a scalar function. Let's look at a couple examples of calculating divergence. So calculate del dot f. Here my vector field in the first example is x squared comma y. So if I want to take del dot f, so del dot f, remember that's going to be thinking of this like partial derivative with respect to x comma partial derivative with respect to y dot my vector field here, which is x squared comma y. Now if I take the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared, that's going to give me 2x. And now remember dot product means we add everything we get, so I say plus, and then I do the partial derivative with respect to y of y, and that's just going to give us 1. And so we get del dot f, the divergence of this vector field, is actually 2x plus 1. And so what this tells is if we have a greater x value, if x is really big, we would have more amount of spreading out of the vector field in our two-dimensional space. If we had a smaller amount of x, we would have less divergence, right? We would have less spreading out of the vector field. Let's look at our other example of divergence with a three-dimensional vector field. So we have x comma 2y comma 3z as our vector field. So our del dot f here is going to be calculated as, thinking of it as partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z dot x comma 2y comma 3z. Let's just go through and do those. So partial derivative with respect to x of x is going to be 1. Remember, we add with a dot product. Partial derivative with respect to y of 2y is going to be 2. And partial derivative with respect to z of 3z is going to be 3. So we get 1 plus 2 plus 3. We get 6. So in other words, it doesn't matter what point we're at. We get divergence of 6. So we get a positive spreading out of our vector field at all points. Uh, you can think about maybe if this was like a negative 6 for our divergence, we might have contraction, all contracting toward a single point. But here we have positive divergence everywhere, so we get some spreading out at all points. Lastly, let's talk about the curl of a vector field. So the curl of a vector field f, or an operation that we'll write as del cross f, we can think of as nx minus my, partial derivative of n with respect to x, minus partial derivative of m with respect to y, all of that times the special unit vector in 3D space k hat. So that is the vector 0, 0, 1, right? It has one unit of z component. You might remember from our previous video, Green's theorem circulation form had this. This was the two-dimensional curl. We can also think of it as the kth component of curl. You can see why now. And also we sometimes call this the circulation density. Let's look at how this is calculated. So del cross f, thinking of it as this operation. Again, this is not a real vector that we're using to cross product with some other vector field here. But we're using this notation to think about how we calculate it. So think about del, the vector that would have the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z. And then doing the cross product of that with our vector field, which would have components m, n, and p. If we do this as a cross product instead of in two-dimensional space, which we don't really do a cross product in two-dimensional space fully. So thinking of the cross product as what it really is in three-dimensional space, we would take this cross product, the determinant, in other words, of this i hat, j hat, k hat, this next row being the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z, and then the components of our vector m, n, and p being the last row. We'll remind you that curl is a measure of how a vector field is rotating about a point or a specific vector direction. And for curl, what I'm doing is I'm taking the curl of a vector field, and I'm also doing a cross product with it, so I must be getting out a vector field as well. 
So as an operation, curl takes some object vector field and gives us information about that vector field that is another vector field. So we input vector field, we get an output of vector field as well. Let's do a little bit of practice of calculating curl here. So we're going to calculate del cross f, the curl. I have my first vector field here, which is zero comma x. So remember with two dimensional curl, if I want to find del cross my vector field f here, then that's going to be partial nx minus partial my times the vector k hat. So I need to figure out what is partial nx. Well, this is m and this is n. So partial nx, the derivative of x with respect to x would be one minus the derivative of zero with respect to y would still be zero. So we'd get one minus zero times k hat. So in other words, our curl of this vector field, we just simply get k hat. Looking at the curl of our three-dimensional vector field over here, yz comma xz comma xy, if I want to figure out del cross f, the curl of this vector field, remember that I'll need to do in three-dimensional space my full cross product with first row of i hat, j hat, and k hat. And my second row, remember, just thought of as partial x, partial y, and partial z as a notation here. And then m, n, and p, right? So this is m, and this is n, and this is p, and we just put them in there in that order. So yz goes here, and xz in the middle, and xy last. And remember, as long as you have a way that you know how to do a cross product, then you should be able to evaluate this. So for me, if I cross out the row and column that i is in, i hat, I get this diagonal, which is partial derivative with respect to y of xy, so that's going to be x minus partial derivative with respect to z of xz, which is going to be x again, minus j hat, remember the sign there on that one. If I cross out that row and column, I would get partial derivative with respect to x of xy, that would be y, minus partial derivative with respect to z of yz, so that would be y, plus k hat, you might expect what's coming here, right? So if I cross out the row and column that k is in, I get partial derivative with respect to x of xz, that would be z, minus partial derivative with respect to y of yz, that's going to be z also. You can see what happened here, right? So I set this one up so that my i hat, j hat, and k hat components are all zero. Now remember that this is not just the number zero. The number zero is a scalar. We're supposed to get a vector field, right? We're supposed to get a vector answer. So this is actually the zero vector, not the scalar zero. Those are different types of objects. Make sure you know what type of object you're supposed to be getting out of your operation. Super important there. So our moral of the story here at the end of your multivariable calculus is know the type of objects that you're dealing with. What type of operation are you using between these? What type of object should you be getting out? Should you be getting a number, some kind of a scalar function? Should you be getting a vector field? It's important to know these things and have a concept in our head before we begin our problems. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a future video.